look at treatment of the glenohumeral joint and we'll treat with the arthrokinematics. Now the humeral head is a mal surface, a convex surface, so the glide will be in the opposite direction to the way we want to treat. So looking at medial rotation first. The plane of this joint is anterolateral, so the glide wants to be along the plane of the joint. So none of these glides are directly um, anterior posterior. To treat medial rotation, We'll take the arm as far as it will go into medial rotation, like so. Now remembering that uh, we need to reach the end of the range, we'll do a hold relax technique, take up the physiological range. If there's any soreness, we can oscillate, and then we can get into the stretch position and stretch it. Now with Nora, we're going to need some stabilization under here. So we'll just simply take a sandbag, and place it underneath the scapula, okay. so the scapula is stable. Okay, now back into this same position again. We'll immediately rotate the arm to its range, hold relax, don't let me move you, and relax, take up the slack, oscillate for the pain, and then a direct stretch. Now if you lean back over the patient, like so, then your push will be in the right direction. You don't want to be standing straight up. So in this position now, I'm in a position where I can stretch this movement out. To stand in the same position, we can look at abduction, the inferior glide for abduction. And f for about 45 degrees of abduction, that is severe limitations of abduction, we can treat this in much the same way as we tested it. So we can stabilize with the thumb in the axilla and simply apply the inferior glide by twisting the body, my body, not the patient's body. And it's just like drawing a sword out of a scabbard. And this will produce the distraction. And again, you do the hold, relax techniques and so forth. For larger ranges of movement, for abduction, we can come into this position, ab take the whole shoulder girdle down the bed, there and then bring the humerus up, like so, and once you're in that position, having done the hold relax technique, just slide your hand across from the shoulder girdle and onto the head of the humerus, like there. Okay, now in this position, if you swing your hip around onto your hand, you can now apply the inferior glide by simply pushing your hip forward against your hand. And with the shoulder girdle already depressed, um, it's stable for this particular glide and you can produce quite a strong inferior glide with this. Okay, for flexion and extension, we'll be doing distraction. And distraction can be used as a very effective pain technique. But in this case, it'll be done in the neutral position, in the resting position of the shoulder, where we tested. And we'll stabilize the um, clavicle and the scapula and simply lean back away from the patient, remembering that we also have to come up and not simply out. So it's this. And we'll grade this as a grade two or so. Okay, nice gentle mobilization for pain. But for uh, mobilizing a somewhat stiffer joint, we will need to be at the end of range. So we'll be come into the same position we were in when we were testing the coracohumeral ligament, that is bring your arm over the top of the forearm and then into the axilla as far as close as you can go. We will then adductor and flexor and then apply the distraction simply by leaning away and pulling somewhat upwards in this position. And remember that you'll use your hold relax technique to come in and do this to get to the end of the range so that you can apply the distraction. For mobilizing extension, we'll do the same distraction, but this time we'll do it in the extended position. So we need the patient at the edge of the bed a little closer. And we'll drop the arm down into this position. Bring the hand into the axilla, like so. Extend it as far as it will go, and then we'll simply pull outwards for the distraction, outwards and upwards. So it's the same glide, but done with the arm extended. And on a bigger patient, you can use both hands to do that traction. 
Okay, so we've looked at all of the movements now except for lateral rotation. And lateral rotation is often treated by producing a anterior glide with the patient in the prone position, so you're pushing down towards the floor. The problem with it is that it also has to be a medial glide, so it's an anteromedial glide, not just an anterior. And if you don't get the glide right, then you're actually producing a very strong anterior shear to the joint capsule. So you can do damage with that particular technique. The alternate way of doing it is easier to do for you, and it's a lot safer for the patient's joints. We'll take the sandbag. Now, instead of gliding the humerus anteromedially, we'll glide the scapula posterolaterally. So we get the same relative glide. So in this case, we need to stabilize the humerus. So the sandbag will come under the humerus and not the scapula. We'll laterally rotate the arm to its extreme of range, again using hold relax techniques, stabilize the humerus here, and then put the heel of the hand onto the coracoid process. Now, if you spread the pressure, this isn't too tender. And then from this position, with the arm straight, we'll lean straight down the coracoid. And if I let go of the arm, you can see that it, what it's actually producing is medial rotation of the humerus. And this is the movement that you actually want to produce here. And by holding this back, of course, what it's doing is stretching it into lateral rotation. Like so. And this isn't too uncomfortable a technique. It's not very nice, so if you come on with the Pisi form and push down this way. Okay, and you may have seen that on Nora's face, I did. But in this position, it's not too bad.